Hey everybody, Josh, KI6NAZ. If you're like me, you might be suffering from RAS, Radio Acquisition Syndrome. I'm in the throes of it myself. If you look around my shack, my workbench, you see there's just radios everywhere. Any good deal I find on radios, I end up buying them, um, and then I don't really have a place to put them. Such is once again the situation on my workbench. And today we're gonna sort that out by adding some shelving, but more importantly, adding important power distribution solutions so that I can power these uh, burgeoning collection of radios I seem to find myself with. So my workbench where my shack is has become overrun. I have an extra VHF radio. I always have QRP radios that I'm playing around with. Of course, I have my 7300 and my 2730, which I use for VHF, UHF. And I am stretching the capabilities of the current power supply that I'm using. So I want to, one, install a new power supply and Anderson distribution bars that are fused to protect all the different radios I could have connected at any one time. This is gonna be advantageous because if I'm ever in a situation where I switch over to solar, or I have a power outage and I need to run off of a battery, I'll be able to supply that by quickly disconnecting the power supply Anderson bar connection from the power supply and then connecting it to a solar panel or a charge controller or something like that, which I'd be running off of batteries. So. Please join me as we go forward in this ultimate task to repower or, or apply more efficient power to my shack. All right, so as you can see, I have a whole host of radios, radio paraphernalia that have been sitting on my desk as I have made more and more YouTube videos. So a lot of this can get uh, stowed or placed in overhead storage on my wall here. In fact, things like shortwave radios already have a home right up here, which is nice. All that stuff needs to be sorted and stowed. And that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna install a shelf uh, under here somewhere, under here. And that will allow us to raise this center part up, get an area here that I can put the power supply, which is sitting off to the side. So join me as I go through this process. So first step, pull the things off the wall. These little part caddies are nice. Keep all my junk together. Furring strips goes behind the pegboard to mount the shelf brackets. Real important for that. Into studs so you get a good firm mount. I'm using my 3D printed, 3D printed brackets here. And we have a problem. Yeah, these were not up to the task. No big deal, let's get some beefier metal brackets, get them set up. Again, furring strips are real important into a stud. I just easily leveled it out. And uh, what I'm using is some melamine board. I just did a simple rip cut with a circular saw got it the right size and then on the back end I use a Forstner bit to cut a hole to feed the power lines through to just try and keep things neat for when I decide to do some wire management later. Now everything just goes back up. This went up a lot faster than it felt like it did in real life. Now Andersons go on the connector for the power supply that goes into the connector for the Anderson's breakout bar and we're pretty much ready to go once we power everything up. So we all love Anderson's, right? Are you saying to yourself right now, what's an Anderson's? Who's an Anderson? Well, an Anderson is a plug, basically, a positive and negative or neutral plug that we use for connecting power to amateur radio equipment largely in the 12 volt area, but you can use them just about for anything. They come in a different size gauges and they all connect into one of the standard plugs. So that makes them kind of universal. They work really nicely because once you have them connected properly, they always will mate appropriately with the other connector and thus gives you a solid connection that you really don't have to worry about they have a generally considered much better connection and reliability to that of banana plugs, which are the little pin that goes into the, anyway, 
Basically, it's what we use for universal connection to power. And because they're so everywhere with amateur radio, there's lots of different options to have that capability kind of ganged or connected into one power supply or one solar system. And then you can just plug into that. And MFJ has a whole lineup of these plug bars or distribution bars that we're going to talk about today. If you're anything like I am, you have a desire to distribute power and a lot of power. You've got something on your desk you're working on, you've got a project, you're trying out a new radio, or maybe you've got a kit you're working on. Multiple instances where you could be charging stuff. You could have a radio, like a VHF, UHF radio, like a mobile that you need to power. Um, I was in a situation where I needed more power distribution and MFJ said, we have a host of power options. And that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at every, basically every power distribution option that MFJ offers, going all the way up to the big max switch unit that I have in the back there. The unit I have connected and the one I'm gonna probably stick with here is the 12 bank, 12 Andersons, three of which are run without the switch power, so they're constantly powered, and they have varying amounts of fuses as you go down, starting with 40 for the mains, then 25, 10, 10, and, and so on down. And then this switch controls the remaining nine plugs, which is really, really handy uh, for whatever you're working on. In my case, I have radios I wanna leave on, so I'd plug them on this one, versus things that I want to be able to turn off and on again, and that gives you the ability to do that. MFJ has a couple of different options at this size. They have the same kind of size, but instead of having 12 Andersons, you have eight with three banana plugs. And again, these are all fuse controlled as well, starting with the mains at 40 or the mains line coming in at 40 and then you have 20, 10 and, and on the way down. MFJ has <laughs> almost every option for whatever size of Anderson distribution you're looking for. This one is the eight unit. The eight unit, simple, it's just a little bit smaller. Eight Andersons, that's a really nice size. This one lacks a DC um, connector, but you gain four Andersons and then two banana plugs. And then the small little guy, you have basically one distribution input here to power it, and then you have three outputs that are fused. These are all nice because they're fused units, meaning if you run into a problem and, and something goes wonky on you, you'll pop a fuse instead of damaging potentially the connector, your power supply, or worse, your radio. And every one of these kits comes with a bag of more Anderson connectors and fuses. And depending on how big a kit you get, or a big a bank you get like this one, this is a huge bag of extra Andersons and fuses, which is awesome. Lastly, the little guy is a six port. So one input port and then six Anderson output ports. This is nice if you're doing some like field activations, but you need to distribute power and not really have to, uh, have to mess with it. Very good that way. That's the six-way desktop DC power distribution bank. Now, to run the whole thing, um, you can get a power supply, which is what I ultimately did. And to go along with that, you could use this MFJ protective RF protection uh, AC line RFI filter. Reason why this is pretty interesting is it has a fuse port and a ground lug connection, so you can screw this into your shack ground which makes it really, really nice for having in your shack. These are what I would call like uber convenience items for the shack because <laughs> Anderson's is something you're gonna wanna have on hand at all times. So I'm gonna say a big thank you to MFJ for supplying these, but we're not done yet. Um, I'm gonna give a lot of these away, which I'm gonna figure out a giveaway in the future, likely on my live stream. But I wanna show you what I'm using to give you an idea of how I have this all set up. So let me switch the camera around and show you what I got going. So here's my power station as configured right now. I have the MFJ 4245 MVP. It is a peak 45 amp power supply with 40 amps uh, continuous. It has a two banana plug connectors in the front, a DC cigarette lighter in the front, seven amps restricted on that. And then it has spring-loaded clips in the back and two plugs for Anderson output also on the back. It is fully adjustable, so this will take you up all the way to 13.8, which is where you wanna be for most amateur radio stuff. Fan is automatically controlled. What's pretty cool about it is 
This will run on obviously 220 or, or 105 or 110, but the back end of this, the power supply for the power supply unit actually has a fuse holder with a built-in fuse tray. So your fuse tray has the fuse for the unit, but then it also has another fuse, a spare fuse in case you, you damage that or it burns out, which is a really nicely done design. This is a, a big boy unit. Um, there's a lot of power that this is putting out, but so far, and with this unit, I'll be able to fully run my bank of Andersons on the bottom, which is exactly why I wanted this type of unit. So running off of it right now, the ICOM's not connected, but it will be soon. Above that is my Alinko DR135 into my packet communicator for packet radio. I'm gonna sort out a connection for my Raspberry Pi right now, it's just running off of USB, but eventually that too will be on the Andersons and I can fill it all out and still have plenty to spare for working on any projects I have, which is exactly why I did that, is I have multiple Raspberry Pis, I have other radios that are in chargers that I wanna sort out how to run them as well. And the advantage of this, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to go with this, so I snipped the line in the back of the Anderson's plug uh, for the distribution bar, put an Anderson's on the Anderson's plug. That Anderson's plug is still has the fully elongated cable, the stock cable, and I can, untie that, basically I have it wire wrapped with some Velcro, I can untie that and I can connect it to a solar panel system. So I can go straight from a charge controller into the DC output of the Andersons, plug my shack while still charging my batteries if I were to ever need that. So that is exactly what I want for in my shack. In fact, I'll eventually hook it up to a switch where I can go from solar or I can feed it off of the power supply. So times are good run off power supply. When times are tough or I don't have power, I can switch it over and run on solar. And it'll all be configured right here, right over my workspace, which this is my area where I do most of my soldering and stuff. So this is fantastic. Exactly what I've been planning on doing for a while. I still have a little cord maintenance I gotta do over here on this end. Multiple power cords, multiple solutions for Anderson's connection is all really smart. And I really like these MFJ distribution bars. So that's gonna do it for me today. Tell me in the comments what you do to connect your radios to your power supply or your batteries. I personally like Anderson's a lot. It makes things very, very simple. Once you get yourself a crimper and some connectors and kind of understand how the whole thing goes down, which is really, really simple. I've done a video on that in the past. I'll, I'll post a link in the description. Um, so yeah, tell me what you do at home for your power distribution needs, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in general. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing because I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 0100 UTC time. All right, I'll talk to you again soon. See ya. Every one of these, oh my God. <laughs>